Alrighty, my voice memo recorder is not working, so we're doing this instead. But basically the thing that I'd like to talk about today is differentiation versus integration. One of Ken Wilber of Integral Evolutionary Theory's principles, I think he lays out these 20 different principles of evolution, is that they're, first you differentiate, and then you integrate. And that we have a difference between the two, and I, I just want to walk us through, and, and maybe make a link to a few other things that I've talked about in the past. When it comes to like your trajectory and your growth process, if you're in a growth stage or just like a growth community even, you're constantly making decisions about who you are coming, who you're becoming next and how you are, and how you're becoming that person. And frankly, one of the things I try to do in my work is like get you to worry less about the how and more about the who. And the how is gonna happen if you're around the right people, if you're in the right mindset, and if you're, I think if you're like willing to do the work in a way, if you're willing to do the hard thing first, the how is just gonna like beautifully unfold. If you can get the, if you can get into rhythm basically. Like a lot of this stuff comes down to rhythm, which is cool because I'm familiar with rhythm as a tap dancer. Um, and when you're in rhythm, it's just like nothing better than like being right in rhythm, right in the beat. Okay, so what's the connection that I wanna make here? When we differentiate between two things, we're, we're kind of making a separation, a delineation, and you might even say a decision. And this is where I find it really helpful to get into the etymology of the word decide. When you have the prefix de or di, you know, we know that this means like two, but it also means like to, to cut in a way. I'm pretty sure discernere, discernment, the Latin for discernment is to share in there, right? And it's to, to separate and to choose one of those things. And similarly, if you look at the etymology of the word decide, the DE is the separating piece, the, the, to divide into two, if you will. And then the side part, C-I-D-E, if you look at the suffix of that word, that means to kill. Homicide, suicide, fratricide, genocide, whatever it is. That, that means to, to do away with, basically. And so the invitation here is that like, when you're making a decision, you're, you're cutting and you're killing. And the thing that you're, you didn't kill is the new thing, the thing that you go with. So if you don't actually like do away with that other portion, it's not really a decision. And, and this is where I wanna just like bring us back a little bit to like, it's a very valuable stage of the process to be in, the differentiation stage. And I think it should be celebrated because you've made the differentiation between where you are and where you want to be or, or how you feel and how you're acting. Because sometimes the two don't always reflect one another, right? The, what's the phrase about like the left hand and the right hand? They don't do the same thing. The, I'm, I'm, I'll have to look that up. <laughs> You want the two to be reflective of one another as best as possible. So there is kind of like a gap between when you differentiate and when you integrate. In that gap, there's a, like I don't even know necessarily how long the, the duration of time is between the two. And arguably it's different for everybody. We could maybe go back and look at like other similar patterns of how long it takes between the time that somebody has differentiated something versus when they've integrated it. But I'd also invite you to get curious on what that duration of time is like. Because it might be longer than you expect it to be to fully integrate something. I kind of also go to like, <laughs> what needs integrating? We could lay that question out there and spend, the, spend some time there, which I think I might want to do. And then secondly, like, let me just hear from you guys. What do you feel the difference is between differentiation and integration? So to differentiate is to notice 
the difference between things and maybe then make a decision about which of those things is more aligned with who you are, where you're going, who you're becoming, who you're changing into. So one of the principles that I want to lay out is that like change is inevitable, transformation is a choice, okay? If you're in this group, you're in the transformation category because that's what you paid for. And and nothing, and yay, and woohoo, fun. We're all doing it together too. So, and maybe I should like just take a moment to talk about the fact that like when you, when change happens, it's hard. I was just watching this Sam Ovens video that I'll send to you guys because it's I think it's really valuable. But it's a lot about like not only doing the hard thing first, but making hard things based instincts. Because it's the hard th- unless we do the hard things, we're not going to transform. This almost gets us a little bit into like. Darwinism, survival of the fittest, like, and the good news is, is like your life probably isn't at stake, but like your future identity, the life of your future identity is at stake if you're not doing the hard things. If you're not like, you know, in, in, if you look at this from a physiological point of view, if you don't stress your tissues, they atrophy. Okay. So if we've got the The tissues in the physical body, they exist in the upper right quadrant. They exist on the exterior dimension. And and for every exterior, there's a correlate to the interior. And so the principle applies on the interior as well. That, like, that stuff needs to be engaged with. Those inner subtle body tissues, however you want to think about that, they need to be stressed too. And it's probably going to be uncomfortable at first. Emotions are probably going to come up as you're trying to, like, figure this shit out. Resistance is going to come up. You're going to want to just go back to where you came from because it's easier to do... It's easier to be who you are than to step into who you're becoming. And I'm actually trying to make the case that that's not true because over time, you become dissatisfied. Why? Because you've differentiated. And, and you... It's, it's, this is the really the one of the main things I want to talk about today is, like... We suffer a little bit in that differentiation process because you've differentiated, but you haven't yet integrated. And so you see like, wait, I should be doing this thing. You ever hear someone say like, oh yeah, I should do that. I should do that. I should do that. They've differentiated. Good. Now it's time to integrate. How do we integrate? You take action. A belief is to act it out. Okay. And, and like, that's not even the main point of this video. I help you integrate. That's why you're in the group, you know? You're in the group both to differentiate and to integrate. I try to check both of those boxes for you. It's also not only that, like, change is hard, but also sometimes change feels, like, less preferable almost. Sam Ovens in this video gives the example of, like, when social media platforms change their user interface (laughs) everyone's always like up in arms about it i remember this like facebook would change their user interface and for the first couple days everyone's posting like what are they doing why can't they go back to the way that was this is so much worse and i mean just imagine now like going back and like to the original facebook like you probably wouldn't want it but at first there was this discomfort with it and, and maybe that's because the differentiation was forced onto you and you didn't see it yet, right? They're, that was coming from their user design team, their user experience team, blah, blah, blah. So it was forced upon you. And that, that's just one example. And I'm trying to make some links here. You'll see, I hope, where this all lays out. Because what I want to talk to you about is like that journey and that span of time between differentiation and integration. And how we can be in relationship to ourselves and to our emotions in a way that is, I mean, really, like, anchored in peace. A friend of mine said it that way once, that, like, when you're on your journey, when you're changing, the more you can be anchored in peace, the better, because, like, change is hard. Change can be hard. Change can be unsettling. So get anchored in peace. When I had that conversation with that friend that day, I said, how do you stay anchored in peace? And without missing a beat, my friend was like, Anapanasati, dude. 
Anapanasati dude. Shout out to Ian. Anapanasati is a uh, is awareness of breath, breath practice. You know, just on a on a pana meditation, you can just sit and like focus on the breath right at the tip of your nose, the cool air entering your nostrils, and then maybe the slightly warmer air coming back out the other way. And you'll find that I think that there are multiple options for how you stay anchored in peace. Remember love. Architect your environment. Be around people who are upgrading your consciousness. Hear like spiritual sounds. I want to say spiritual sounds, but hear sounds that are, are pure and cleansing. Like your senses. Like so there's a bunch of ways we could talk about how to be anchored in peace. Do the habits, blah 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 blah. Now, here's the kicker. Sometimes the actions that lead us to being anchored in peace aren't familiar. So we have to that's part of the change process. Once I would put that one like first though. Like let's figure out how to get anchored in peace because that way we know like okay, change is happening, but I'm all good. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I have everything that I need right now. I believe that we have all the tools and the resources that we need for what we are going to face today. Okay? Okay. So you stay anchored in peace in the period between differentiation and integration as best as possible. One of the links that I want to put together here is that when you've differentiated in this group, in Journey to You, on your health journey, on your identity evolution, whatever it is, a lot of times you're differentiating between how you are acting in accordance with yourself versus how and where maybe you're not in accordance with yourself. How you're not in accordance with the evolutionary impulse. How you're not in accordance with letting, you know, the, the rhythm of Spanda kind of just act upon and with you and in you and all around you so that you naturally grow, you naturally evolve. So this idea of like being in accordance with something is like, it kind of comes to alignment. It, it has to do a lot with design and that design and even balance. Like we could, we could call all of those things, being in accordance with the design, being in balance, using the technology in the way that it was designed to be used because there is a design and the design is divine. Can we agree upon that? There is a design, and the design is mine. <laughs> so, when I first started Journey to You, I went ahead and I developed this quadrant that I got all excited about. It came to me like kind of early on based on something Kate was sharing on a call one day about like Alan Watts. She was bringing in a Watts quote. She, I love Kate because like she gets obsessed with something for a little while, and it's like she just opens the floodgates and lets it like flood in. And that way she can kind of put it back out to her community based on, you know, how it fits in with the rest of her knowledge. And so the quote that she was bringing in from Alan Watts was basically, I think it was like, most people today walk around acting out of, out of accordance with themselves. Something along those lines, right? And so that just got me thinking like, well, what the fuck does that mean? Like, what the fuck does it mean to walk around out of accordance with yourself. And so it, it kind of got me thinking about this whole thing of like, well, there's a design. And there's certain things that the design is capable of and there's certain things that the design is not capable of. For example, I'm driving this car right now. The car is being fueled by like gasoline, right? If I were to put something other than gasoline in my gas tank, that would be not acting in accordance with the design. And it might actually harm the functionality of the vehicle. In yoga, a lot of times you'll hear that like the body is our vehicle. And you could extend that to the mind as well. Like the mind and the body are our technology to move through this life and to, to kind of let spirit unfold in action. 
that's the way that I think about that. Spirit with a capital S. You replace your word for spirit with whatever else you want to replace it with, and like, if you're if you're an atheist, then fine. But like, it still applies. That there is technology, and the technology has a design, and you want to do things that are in accordance with the design. You don't ask. You could take this all the way back to like differentiating between a, a hoe and a shovel. You know, you use the things for different reasons. I like to go a little bit more sophisticated, I suppose, with the technology because, like, look at us. Look at the human body. What's it capable of? And what's it not capable of? And how can you act in ways that enhance what the body is capable of instead of, like, dumbing it down, you know? Okay, so, I developed this quadrant and on the vertical dimension of the quadrant, you have this principle of acting in accordance with yourself, which is on the top end of the polarity, versus out of accordance with yourself, which is at the bottom end of the polarity. And then the horizontal dimension, so every quadrant is kind of made up with you know, these intersecting dimensions to create the four different quadrants. The horizontal on the left is unconscious, and on the right is conscious. And that creates four distinct fields that basically invite the perspective that we can act in a way where we are unconsciously out of accordance with ourselves. We can be in a way where we are unconsciously in accordance with ourselves and then if you move up you can be in a way where you are consciously in accordance with your design and the last one is the upper left where it's like you're unconsciously in accordance you don't even have to think about it you know what i mean you're just like you're unconsciously in accordance with the design of the body i would put things like you know even the autonomic nervous system up there it's not something you have to think about it's functioning properly, it's functioning in accordance with the design. But then we also know that sometimes things happen where you're not even aware that you're doing something that's bad for you. So you're not aware that you're out of accordance with the design. And that would go in the upper, I guess that would go in the, sorry, the bottom, bottom left. Unconsciously out of accordance. The differentiation process will oftentimes land us in the bottom right. You've differentiated between what ways of being and behaviors and thoughts and actions are in accordance with yourself, but you're still doing them because they're the things you've always done. So of course, there's gonna be a little bit of a lag time where it's like, wait a second, I've differentiated, but I haven't integrated. And the integration process is moving yourself to being consciously in accordance with yourself and eventually, once you're there enough and you're doing the conscious thing in accordance with yourself, maybe for 30 days, maybe for three months, however long it takes to automate the thing, that thing can now shift over to the upper left. And you're now acting unconsciously in accordance with yourself. Now, guess what? Like, even that new behavior that you've now differentiated, automated, integrated, so maybe automation comes before integration. That's an interesting thing to think about. So you've moved the thing up all the way to the upper left quadrant. And you see how it actually, there's, it's kind of cyclical. Like we could take this to the spiral if we wanted to, maybe for another day. But probably even that behavior is gonna have to evolve at some point. So it's gonna cycle right back down to like, wait, this used to work. I, I moved this thing all the way to the being unconsciously in accordance with myself. And all of a sudden that same behavior is now I'm unconsciously out of accordance with myself because I'm evolving, because I'm changing, because everything's changing and I'm changing with it, if I choose to. Change is, ine change is inevitable, transformation is a choice. Change, say it with me, change is inevitable, transformation is a choice. Now, the final component that I wanna wrap in here is like, what is the quality of 
this is where it's like it's such a good opportunity for reparenting stuff. So if you can put something like parts work into all of this, you're going to have a lot easier of a time if you can play the role of the mature, responsible adult or parent who, who helps the helps with the growth process, right? Helps usher us along. Because if we didn't get that nurturance as kids, then we're just going to repeat the pattern of whatever we got. It's not a blame game to our parents. It's just like, it is what it is. You know, like if, if my mom had self-doubt, I have self-doubt. If my dad had, you know, rigid, perfectionist mentality or mindset, I have rigid, perfectionist mentality or mindset. So that's all fine and good but like what I'm saying now is like you get to a point where you're evolved enough to realize like oh I need to take responsibility for myself and you get into some really beautiful reparenting practices that's almost a separate thing it's just like kind of one way to do this it's another way to be anchored in peace you've got to find your method for what's going to anchor you in peace go to the breath Anapanasati go to mantra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Go to your heart and just remember love for whatever it's going to take. Stay anchored in peace as you differentiate between where you are acting in accordance with your design versus where you're acting out of accordance with your design. And you might find, oh, I found something that I'm doing that's out of accordance with my design. I'm not getting the, the adequate or requisite sleep that's required. I'm not getting maybe requisite nu nutrition maybe you're not getting requisite play or or emotional authenticity or expression and this is really where like, I take it right to, to a, go to a model for this go to the model of the chakras go to a model of like our hierarchy of needs all of these things can help us understand the design that's the yoga to me is like just learn the design and not learn the design but learn that the design is fine blah, 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 blah. Not just learn the design, but learn that the design is divine. Okay? How are you going to stay anchored to peace as you move through your process of differentiation into integration? Because if you're, like, unfortunately, I think the habit there is, like, and this is just what I noticed in myself and, like, in some of my group members, is that we instead go into this pattern of, like, shame and self-recrimination and self-judgment and like I feel bad because I said I was going to do this and I'm not doing this and to use some of the language that we were talking about earlier it's like I feel bad because I've differentiated but I haven't integrated and I'm saying like actually you shouldn't feel bad about that you should feel really fucking good about that because the differentiation part of the process is not only important but it's it's um, it's unavoidable. You have to go through differentiation before you go to integration. Eh? Eh? That's a Raghu thing. So I hope I've said something that is worthwhile and valuable for you to listen to today. Be gentle with yourself as you differentiate. And also know that like your, your survival kind of depends upon being able to differentiate and your survival also depends on being able to integrate and your survival also depends on how you can be in relationship to yourself between those two modes all right peace out